okay so we'll continue with the, um, the special media now uh, what is a differential media differential media uh, are those which distinguish microorganisms based on uh, their growth characteristics which distinguish that means a media which distinguish between different groups of bacteria based on their growth characteristics right so uh, unlike the other media like already we have seen a uh, selective media um, enriched media enrichment media in all those things the growth was either promoted or inhibited but in in differential media it differentiate bacteria into two into two or or, uh, or so right so there is a classification there is a categorization of bacteria based on their growth pattern in a media and uh, this as it helps in uh, in the in the categorization it's uh, employed for a partial or a tentative identification of microorganism also right so uh, what are the major criteria adopted usually presence of a special substance in the media uh, helps the identification or helps the differentiation and this particular component will be differentially utilized by a bacteria that means if you are provided the medium with a particular substrate and uh, if a bacteria utilizes it it will be considered as that particular substrate utilizing organism and those which are not utilizing that are non utilizing organism right and uh, we will have uh, some screening strategies whether that organism has utilized the substrate or not utilized the substrate okay that's one of the common common criteria we we follow and also uh, many ph indicating dyes uh, i mean see uh, that's what uh, what we uh, use for the screening ph indicating dyes are used to differentiate bacteria uh, which liberate acids right usually this acid production is important because most of the fermentation of uh, sugars uh, will follow acid production so uh, the fermentation ability of organism will be easily followed through a ph indicator that means uh, uh, it's like it's given there when a micro x metabolizes certain substances and not used by the microbe y so suppose there are two organisms x and y and the x utilizes a particular substrate then after utilization the x will cause a visible change in the media and y will not cause any change right so uh, for example x causes production of a color so uh, those colonies or those bacteria which produces or those those growth which produces a color change are considered as the x metabolizing organism and those which are not providing color are considered as x a non metabolizing organism so that is how we categorize organisms right and uh, in the in the in the modern uh, media preparations or recently we have a different uh, ready made media in which we use certain substances called chromogenic substances these chromogens are uh, pretty good substances uh, for the selective or for the uh, differential identification of bacteria which are growing in that media right that means these are uh, certain artificial substrates given in the media and that provide or that release different colors upon their reactions or upon their breakdown or or categorize catabolic catabolism by organisms or at a particular ph uh, there will be different condition and these chromogenic substance will impart a specific color to a specific organism right and uh, in short this help in identification of different bacteria in a single shot that means if you have a mixed population in your hand or as a if you as already said if you have a soil sample with the different bacteria in it and if you inoculate them into a chromogenic media then uh, if you have 10 uh, or or five different bacterial types and all those five types will give you five different colors this is how uh, this property is being exploited right you can see in the in the media in the in the image shown there you can see 
uh, the blue colonies of E. coli uh, and also the different colored colonies. Um, Salmonella gives you a particular color, E. coli gives red color. All these are different chromogenic media. Right. I'm not going much in much details of the into the details of uh, this chromogenic media. If you are interested, you can go for further references. Okay. Now, uh, certain examples for differential media. <coughs> See, uh, the first thing uh, is Mekong agar. Already we have seen that Mekong agar is, uh, you can recall that this is a selective media. This was a selective media, MCA. So this Mekong agar is not only a selective but a differential also. Right, and how it helps in differentiation, how or what is the peculiar feature to make them differential? Uh, the answer is which consists of neutral red. Neutral red is a pH indicator dye. Right. So, this Mekong Yaga consists of lactose as the sole source of carbon. Clear? So, when bacteria utilize or the ferment uh, lactose, there will be acid production. And this acid production will be indicated by a change in color of the neutral red from yellow to pink. Right? So, the neutral red will be yellow at uh, alkaline pH or at neutral pH uh, then uh, that means that usually at alkaline pH that will be yellow in color and that will be turned to pink as the pH shift from neutral to acidic right that means there will be lactose utilization by the bacteria and there will be release of acids this acid will cause a shift in pH from uh, uh, the alkaline or, or that will cause a, a drop in pH to the acidic level and at acidic pH the neutral red will give you a pink color. Right. So those colonies, those bacterial colonies which are lactose fermenting will give you a pink color and those which are not consuming lactose will give you a colorless colony. Right. Salmonella uh, does not utilize lactose and hence it will be pink, non-pink only, whereas E. coli is positive. The second example for differential media is blood agar. As already we have seen, uh, this, is a, uh, this is an example for an enriched media, where right, blood agar which consists blood as the added ingredient and which differentiate bacteria based on their ability to, to uh, break down RBCs, what we uh, commonly refer to as hemolysis right and uh, um, there are different types of hemolysis exhibited by different bacteria and um, they are what we call they are hemolytic in nature and if that bacteria is not consuming RBCs they are called non hemolytic so we can differentiate organisms as hemolytic and non hemolytic and within the hemolytic group we can categorize them based on their different uh, hemolytic ability and uh, here you can see the growth of uh, organisms in mekongi those which are fermenters will be shown as pink colors pink colony you can see the growth of colony as pink uh, and in the non lactose fermenters there will be colorless colonies you can see the different uh, one one colorless colony one colorless growth and one pink color growth and here is um, hemolysis on blood agar. In blood agar, usually there are three three types of hemolysis are usually observed. What is we commonly call alpha hemolysis, beta hemolysis, and uh, gamma hemolysis. In which gamma hemolysis means the uh, uh, no hemolysis, and beta hemolysis is the actual hemolysis or is the complete RBC lysis. And usually this hemolysis is is induced by uh, or, or catalyzed by the production of certain endotoxins by the organisms like streptolysin SLO, streptolysin O, streptolysin S, etc., which is responsible for the reaction. And there will be a yellow clear background to the colony. You can see that image. And at the same time, alpha hemolysis is a, is a partial hemolysis. And why there is a partial hemolysis? It's because the hemolysis is induced by not by any endotoxin but by the production of H2O2 hydrogen peroxide and this hydrogen peroxide cause production of uh, methemoglobin by a partial oxidation of hemoglobin so hemoglobin is converted into methemoglobin 
and this methemoglobin production is induced by the presence of H2O2 right and this methemoglobin production cause a green background in the colon so gamma hemolysis will be uh, denoted by a pink or oh sorry a, a green color colored background at the same time beta hemolysis will be identified by a yellow background clear so that's what uh, blood uh, uh, hemolysis by different bacteria now uh, the next category of media is selective differential so as of now we have already seen enriched media enrichment media selective media and differential media now a combo media that's a selective differential media definitely this will be uh, a media with the properties of both selective and differential media right and you can see example we'll, we'll uh, explain them through example right so the first example is EMP agar eosin methylene blue agar right it was listed under the selective media and also it's a differential media it's selective media for already we have seen that it's selective for gram negative due to the presence of inhibitory substances like methylene blue and uh, how they differential is that they differentiate um, certain organisms they differentiate actually differentiate gram negative organisms based on their lactose fermenting ability so the lactose fermenting organisms and or even otherwise you can specifically say they can distinguish E. coli from other lactose fermenters right uh, it's because E. coli will give you a, a purple colony with black center and a green metallic sheet right while um, those bacteria which are which are uh, uh, non E. coli will give you a pink color if they ferment lactose and will give you a colorless colony if they do not ferment lactose but all of them are gram negative but equally give you a purple colony with black center and green metallic sheen while if it is lactose fer non fermenting uh, sorry lactose fermenting but not equally then they'll give you uh, a pink colony and if it is non lactose fermenting but gram negative then will give you a colorless colony right that means we have three possible colonies one is a uh, rapid lactose fermenter example is E. coli itself it's a rapid lactose fermenter and will produce a pretty high quantity of acid and will convert uh, or will drift the ph from the neutral into a very low that means below 4.8 or 4.9 right and the second category is slow lactose fermenter example enterobacter it's a gram negative one but uh, even uh, it's a lactose fermenter but it's a slow lactose fermenter and hence the ph will not be uh, drawn down uh, in a very fast way that means there will be a ph shift uh, from between 5 and 6 right and the third category or third colony will be non lactose fermenter which are usually non coliforms uh, like salmonella and other colonies they will not consume lactose and hence there will be no color for the colonies right so the e coli why the very important question very interesting question is that there is no substance with a green color or there is no product produced with the green color then why there is a green metallic sheen that's a, an important question we have to address then uh, the explanations are like E. coli drops the pH to around 4.8 as already stated the pH will be will drop into very low condition like for very acidic 4.8 and at this very low pH eosin and methylene blue present in the media will combine together to form a complex called eosin methylene blue complex eosin methylene blue complex this complex formation occurs at very low pH and which results in a green metallic sheen actually right so only in that particular pH the eosin methylene blue complex formation results so this pH shift is uh, induced only by E. coli not by other lactose fermenters right clear so this complex formation occurs only when the pH drops below a threshold that means 4.9 so other lactose fermenters which are not reducing the pH to that threshold will not produce the green metallic sheen and hope that question is clear. 
So the colonies of Enterobacter produces pink color as they are slow fermenters and Salmonella produces colorless colonies. Then the second example is Endo agar. Uh, again, we have a certain discussion on Endo agar already. Uh, they produce um, red colonies for lactose fermenters and colorless colonies for lactose non fermenters. Right, and sometimes there will be a green metallic sheen also. And the third example is Macongi agar. Uh, again, selective for selective for gram negative and uh, differentiate. Uh, lactose fermenters again right so the uh, gram positive bacteria are inhibited due to the presence of crystal violet and bile salts and neutral red will give you different colors for the colonies so those which are fermenters of lactose will be pink in color and not only pink uh, not only pink for the colony but also if it is a strong lactose fermenter that will give you uh, uh, that means there will be the, the acid will be uh, diffused into the medium. So the medium also will be pink colored, right? There will be a pink halo, pink zone will be there. But if it is a slow uh, producer or, or if it is a, a weak fermenter, then there will not be any pink halo, pink zone will not be there, but the colony will be pink in color. And the third category is non-fermenter will be definitely colorless. Yeah, here you can see the uh, different colonies. One which is colorless are non-fermenters. Then the middle one is a colony which is fermenting but in a slow way. That will give you a pink colony but the medium is not pink. The third one is a medium is also turned pink. Right. So these are uh, the examples. Uh, or the, the colony growth in Macongi agar. In Endo agar also you can see the, the pink coloration and also the green metallic sheen formation. Uh, this will show you a <coughs> Endo agar plate. There are E. coli and Klebsiella giving, giving you different uh, colonies. Now uh, you can see the composition of uh, certain certain media which already we have discussed. You can see Macongi agar in which what are the components present and what at what con concentration, and do agar and EMB agar. This may be useful for the uh, for the laboratory side when you go for the preparation. Right. So uh, by this we'll we'll come to an end of uh, the special media. So uh, in this part of presentation, we have seen uh, different uh, selective, uh, uh, different special media like uh, differential media uh, and also selective differential media. And we have actually focused on certain actual examples like EMB agar, Mekongi agar, Endo agar and how the different colors are formed and hope you, you can follow the discussion. So by this, we wind up this part. And in the next presentation, we will discuss the other types of media. Hope you understood. Thank you for listening.